heard y'all was doing our dance. Oh, oh we be oh. killing. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, 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 oh. Don't do that no more. Don't do that no more. No more. No more. No. 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 Oh. If you remember the duo Kid and Play, then surely you remember the iconic house party films. Huh? What do you mean iconic? They were funny for sure, but what makes them so iconic? Well, I'm gonna go over that. So this video will be a bit different. This will be the first in my iconic series where I'll kind of analyze a movie, a series, an actor or a musician or or whatever, from the past that made a huge impact during their prime and now it's like people have forgotten or overlooked them for their previous accomplishments. So like it'll be called icons under the radar or icons not talked about enough. The subjects I choose are going to seem random and irrelevant to a lot of people but that's the point. I'm here to remind and inform y'all why these are iconic and never to truly be irrelevant because their influence is being seen every day. Today, I'm reminding y'all about House Party and Kid and Play. Now, anyone familiar with the history of hip hop in the 80s should be familiar with the duo made up of half Christopher Reed and another half of Christopher Martin. They became friends in a similar way to say, Outkast and what was like the 80s version of battle rapping. They were right there in New York City where hip hop was born. They watched the conception and they were there for the birth and they naturally jumped on in that new hip hop trend. Hip hop, you know how we do it. We get out on the block, start break dancing. We hanging out with our friends, shaking hands. We do the dance, go to the ball and right. shoot some hoop. Okay. Doop, doop. <laughs> Kid and Play were mainly active from the late 80s to the mid 90s, roughly only 10 years, but they really made the most of this time and accomplished a lot. Between them are three albums, two in gold, and several singles including the House Party soundtracks that were hot on the R&B and rap charts back then. They started building a brand based on their hip, fun, teen friendly vibes as they created dance moves and got the party going. So imagine a popular dance duo on TikTok, but it's 30 years ago and nobody had the internet like that. They still managed to get recognized for their talent and didn't have to worry about anyone stealing their dance moves and taking all the credit for it. Being so popular with the kids, they even came out with a Saturday morning cartoon. It only lasted one season, of course, but that's still quite an accomplishment. Yo, play, I just got a call from Wacky D. So? So Wacky D told me he found out from Chubby C, who heard it from Chico and the Frog, who found out from Rashid, who heard it from Duke. Kid, you're wasting my time! They kept really busy in those next five years and by the mid 90s had already hit iconic status. And I'd say not so much because of their contribution to music, but their contribution to that whole 90s black film era and the people they helped come up along the way. The House Party movies actually brought a lot of relatively unknown comedians and musicians to the big screen and allowed them to really showcase their talents. Now I'm not going to get into the plot of these movies much because it doesn't matter. It was the comedic and musical talents that they had driving it. And House Party had a lot of talent in the cast. Now the first film obviously was a well shot legitimately funny and original cult classic releasing in spring of 1990 right before spring break. It was originally written for the Fresh Prince and his bestie, DJ Jazzy Jeff, FYI. They had the same let's have a fun hip hop party appeal as Kid and Play did. Now besides obviously Kid and Play, it starred the rising comic Martin Lawrence and rising actress Tisha Campbell, whom together is most known for the show which didn't start airing till fall of 1992. House Party was before Martin even started hosting Def Comedy Jam and I think that is what really launched him in that headlining comic give that man a show he's funny as hell type of space. Now Tisha Campbell who played Gina on The Martin Show was a rising star in her own right who had already been in musicals and played a big role in Spike Lee's film School Days two years prior to House Party. Hasn't done a huge amount of movies since Boomerang and House Party 3, but did a lot of work in TV, including voiceover roles. And she continues that kind of work till this day. Honestly, Tisha Campbell is iconic all by herself, just as an actress. But perhaps the biggest star in this movie at the time was comedian Robin Harris, who played Kit's father, Pop, Hop on Pop. I wouldn't do that just yet. Your ass is mine. 
You know something, with that Jerry curl you got on your head, you better not ever do a crime. Police never they had no problem finding you. Follow the drip, follow the drip. Robin Harris unfortunately died of a heart attack nine days after House Party released. He was only 36 years old, but he left behind a hilarious stand-up record that includes the Baby's Kid sketch, which inspired a little movie in 1992 directed by animation icon Bruce W. Smith. I recommend any fan of House Party to listen to the classic Robin Harris stand-up if they haven't already. You can stream it on Spotify. The other notable characters in this movie are the three bullies who are in the real hip-hop and R&B group, Full Force. They made for some hilarious conflict and they kind of remind me of the ghostly trio from Casper, the friendly ghost. You had Not So Fat, Fat So, Stretch, and Stinky reincarnated. Yo, this punk motherfucker throwing shit at us. And we're gonna kick your fucking ass. These characters together made a classic film. But then a year and a half later, 1991, was the sequel. Now this sequel came out during the cool month of October, a week before Halloween. And it seemed like the house party movies came out around popular party times, or maybe it was just a good time to release a movie in the theaters. It debuted at number one at the box office and featured a new group of up and coming stars like Queen Latifah, way back when she was still dressed like an African queen, as well as a cameo by already established actress Whoopi Goldberg. Martin and Gina came back for this one, as well as the ghostly trio. The movie was dedicated to Pops, the character Robin Harris played, and had a higher budget but made less than the original. So yeah, it was fun, but it might be my least favorite of the trilogy. It had a big kid goes to college narrative, but the actual house party aspect didn't even start until an hour into the movie. And it's only an hour and 30 minutes long. Now in between the second and third movie is when Martin Lawrence started blowing up. He had a role in Eddie Murphy's Boomerang film, which also starred Tisha Campbell. Boomerang was kind of like a big house party itself with Eddie Murphy as the host. It was an iconic film and not only had the young rising talents like Chris Rock and Halle Berry, but also the older icons like Eartha Kitt and Grace Jones. You couldn't tell, but Grace was 42, 43 during filming this. I should make a whole iconic video just about her. So Martin began hosting Deaf Comedy Jam and starred in his own TV show that began to air that fall. This all happened in 1992. That Martin show and newfound fame he had as a comedian might have been the reason he was absent from House Party 3. The third movie came out in a weird time, winter of 94, after Christmas and New Year's. So it had the worst premiere weekend spot of all the three, and that most likely contributed to it making the least amount of money in the box office. But it's my second favorite of the three, and this is mostly because of the iconic comedian Bernie Mac. Boy, just be yourself. If people don't like you if you're being yourself, fuck them! And those three girls, Chili, T-Boss, and Left Eye. Hello. I feel like if it wasn't for this new comedian and this new girl rap group, this movie would have suffered. The hilarious full force group didn't come back in this one. Martin was too cool to show up and Tisha barely was in it. She took a smaller role as the ex-girlfriend of Kid. Marquise Houston's boy band back then, Immature, didn't do much for it. They were kind of just there to fill up time. We having a party Friday night, won't you come and oh yeah. Wear that uniform. <laughs> yeah, because I like girls with jobs and benefits. Mm. Like they did in House Party 4. Only House Party 4 was worse because it was just them. One of these producers for House Party 3 must have been like, those immature boys were funny. They should get a spin-off movie. And then that producer quit Hollywood or got fired or something and became a farmer in Nebraska somewhere. Go the goddamn dog! They should have given TOC a damn spin-off, but I guess they were too busy actually being successful. I kid, Immature did okay in their own way. They were successful too. So like the other movies, this was one driven not by the amazing storyline, but by the real life talents of the comedians and musicians, with the latter taking more of the focus. As I wasn't a big fan of Roger from Sister Sister taking the lead role in anything, I won't knock the talent he had as an R&B singer along with Immature, who did a decent job keeping the energy up. At this point, Kid and Play were no longer the hot new hip hop group, but they were introducing us to who was. So the movie featured a young TLC who 
for the movie went by a group called Sex as a Weapon. Immature and TLC were both new and upcoming group acts. TLC had only one released album. As far as I know, House Party 3 was the only movie they were all featured in like this. And of course they blew up in 1994. After this and their iconic sophomore album Crazy Sexy Cool came out later that fall. They've of course reached commercial success after that second album, but it was really nice to be able to see them all before all the fame. Before the troubles, the tragedy, the ups and downs, they were a fresh new hip hop girl group just making a cameo in a popular film franchise, all bright eyed and bushy tailed. Seeing TLC like this in HD was my favorite part of watching House Party 3. And I feel like there's a lot of young TLC fans out there who didn't know about this. So consider yourself informed. Share this with that TLC fan who's never seen House Party. There's always one. I came up with this video topic based on how much screen time Sex is a Weapon had on the third movie and I just had to share it with somebody I guess. Collectively the House Party movies are a precious 90s icon that should stay in the 90s and definitely not try to reboot and continue any more than it already has. The whole concept of throwing a house party while your parents are away is extremely cliche at this point. It was really funny as a plot device prior to the 2000s, but since everyone got a cell phone and a Facebook account and whatnot, people started planning things better and I think it's been normalized and formalized, you know, it's not a big deal anymore. House parties used to have more of a spontaneous, exclusive, you had to be there appeal to it. And if you weren't invited or didn't go, chances are that you missed out on something crazy. And a lot of today's parents would probably be okay with throwing a house party for their kids. For one, it makes them look cool. Also, they'd be able to go out and do some house partying on their own. Well, that's all I wanted to really say about the house party franchise in this context. Subscribe to the channel if you want more iconic breakdown videos like this. And if you're still here, thank you so much for listening. And I hope you learned something. See you in the next one.